Hey everybody, thanks for checking back in. I'm back with Eric Van Dusen, who's a student here at uh, Ohio State, and we're on the Ag Campus, and there's uh, uh, a lot of effort going into sustainability, and Eric and I did the video on the plants on the green wall, but Eric, how does this transfer to homeowners? I'd love to have a green wall like this in my backyard. I've got, actually got a wall in my house where I could put this. Talk us through the process of the mechanics of what we need to do to have a green wall. It's actually fairly simple. Um, all you really need is a waterproof barrier okay. behind this felt and then something to mount it to the wall. Okay. We actually use an aluminum frame um, just for more structural support, but you could use two by fours. All you need to do is make sure it's secure. And the wood, the cedar on the outside yes. is just really to frame it in? Exactly. You wouldn't need this frame. We just did it to look better. More aesthetic. Um, to cover up the edges. Exactly. So we've got these plant pockets where there's actually soil where the plant gets planted. And then behind the felt, the felt's pretty thick. It feels like it's like a half, three quarter inch thick. Yes. It can actually, well, if you were to look up this felt, it's 16 ounce. They actually have 30 ounce felt, okay. which is even thicker. Um, but it's made with... And you can use either? Yes. Okay. And it's made from recycled plastic. That's why we like it from the sustainability okay. standpoint. Okay. Um, and you actually have two layers. It's very simple. You cut a hole in the top layer or a slit. Then you put three staples, one on the outside and one at the bottom. And then okay. you get that pocket. And then you just put the plants in. Plants in the pocket. Yes. And obviously we talked about some failure with the plants because it got very hot and sunny and you had a problem with the what you call a fertigation system yes. because fertigation. You're, you've got fertilizer going through the watering system. Exactly. Well let's talk about that and take this lid off and tell us what you've got going on with the fertigation. How complicated is that to it's do? It's very simple. I mean, the fertilizer injector that we have, it's probably one of your most expensive components. That's really doing all of the work. And the reason we include this fertigation system is because plants evolved growing upwards across, say, like a cliff face in nature. Sure. And what they're usually, what they've evolved to, instead of having excess soil like you would on the ground, they just, they get all of their nutrients through runoff. Run off so in the cracks there. and crevices yeah. coming down the cliff face, so sure. Essentially, this is what, so we, the standard um, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and then trace minerals um, to simulate that in a natural setting because they don't have as much soil as they would on the ground, so that's essential. And I noticed that you've got a little tray here to catch the runoff, yes. and the runoff is going into a collection tank, collection yes. tank that you can use to water other plants. Yes, exactly. Sustainability. Yes. In practice. Yep. All right. I really appreciate the time that you spent with. Oh, I got one other quick question. So, do you have this on a timer? Yes. Um, right now we have it on a timer, but eventually, because we have a lot more resources and academic knowledge, you would at home. But we'll actually have a microcontroller system okay. with sensors telling us when to water and which portions of the garden are drying out. But a simple garden timer that you could oh, put yes. on a hose faucet would work well, that's what we have equally right now. as well in the home landscape. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Eric, thanks for sharing with us. You're welcome. Really good job of, of, of demonstrating sustainability and something creative that you could do in your backyard. We'll see you next time. For your garden, I'm Tom Wood.